chapter number 16. St. Luke chapter number 16. It's going to be all right. You're going to pass the test. Everything is going to be all right. I remember my dad who was here, he and I was working together. And I was in the work truck and damaged the company's truck. And I said, Lord, have mercy on and damaged this company's truck. And my dad got out the truck, looked at me and said, son, always remember things are never as bad as they seem. Sometimes while you're in the midst of it, it looks so bad. Then sometimes God will have to have you to step back and realize it ain't as bad as I thought it was. I read a quote earlier this last week that said, most of your pain is in your mind. Look at somebody and tell them, you can handle this. Come on, you got to find somebody and look at them eyeball to eyeball. Come on, I, I, I need to deputize you. Now look at them and tell them, you can handle this. It's going to be all right. It, it, it feels like it's going to crush you down and take you out, but hear, hear me good. You, you can handle this. It's going to be all right. Somebody has been where you are now. Somebody in this room. And the reason why God preserved them and protected them so that when they got out of it, they would throw the letter back over the wall and let you know things are not as bad as they seem. I was telling my mama one time, mama, I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing with that, I'm dealing with that, I'm dealing with this. And do you know what she said to me? But keep in mind, somebody would love to trade places with you. Things could be a little worse. When you start getting that in your spirit, you lift up your head and decree and declare everything is going to be. All right. Now, 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 this is a word... Uh, this morning for mature audiences only. This, this word is for mature audiences only. Uh, uh, you got to take responsibility uh, for your part in your miracle. The truth of the matter is your miracle is probably more up to you than it is to God. All right. Um, St. Luke chapter number 16. Um, you all may be reading in the King James Version, but if you would, just listen to me. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. G Jesus told this story to his disciples. Verse number one. Jesus told this story to his disciples. There was a certain rich man who had a manager handling his affairs. One day a report came that the manager was wasting his employer's money. So the employer called him in and said, what's this I hear about you? Get your report in order because you are going to be fired. The manager thought to himself, now what? My boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to dig ditches, and I'm too proud to beg. Drop down to verse number 10, and then we'll see what thus saith the Lord. Uh, if thou art faithful in the little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with great responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who would trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? And the word of the Lord is blessed. I want to talk about the miracle of management. You may be seated. The miracle of management. I'm, I'm almost done. I, I, I've learned. I've learned. I'm closing. I've learned that some people are great motivators. I, I mean, they can motivate you. They are great motivators. Uh, I, I've fallen in that category myself. You know, I think I'm a pretty good motivator. Some people are great 
great motivators. Uh, and then there are some people who are great movers. You know, not every motivator is a mover. Some people, they can motivate you, but they can't move you. They can get you excited and get you, you know, get you excited. You, you understand where I'm coming from? They can heat the stove up, but they can't cook nothing. Y'all not going to say amen when you hear the truth? And, and, and they're good motivators. I mean, they, they can motivate you, but they can't, they can't move you from A to B. But then there are some people who are movers. There are some people who are movers. I'm, I'm a motivator and, and I'm a mover, but that's not everybody. Some folk, they're movers. Some folk are motivators. But all of us must be managers. I told you this word from a tour. This is, all of us must be managers. See, see, the difference between motivators and managers, uh, motivation is about doing right things. That's noteworthy. Motivation is about doing right things. Management is about doing things right. I hear your silence. Motivation is about doing right things, while management is about doing things right. You know, truth be told, sometimes we miss pivotal moments because we fail to manage. We miss pivotal moments oftentimes because we mismanage. You remember when Jesus came to the house of Mary and Martha, who were the brother of, uh, and sisters of Lazarus, came to their house, and when Mary found out that she was coming to the house, uh, Martha got busy, started making uh, pound cakes and and. And, and making all these assorted desserts and so on and so forth. She had mismanaged the moment. She had mismanaged the moment. And then Martha got upset with Mary and said, Mary, you see I'm in here working hard. Why are you not helping me? And Jesus had to tell her, Martha, 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 you're doing way too much. You have mismanaged this moment. Mary has chosen that good thing which shall not ever be taken away from her. What was he saying? He was saying, listen, I know you got a whole lot going on and you're excited about what's about to happen, but don't mismanage the moment. Hmm. Sometimes, you know, we go through certain things, truth be told, and while we're going through certain things, we, we miss the opportunity in our opposition. We, we mismanage the moment. And, and because we mismanage the moment, uh, uh, Dr. Dre, so, some, sometimes we miss the miracle, something that God wanted to do for us because we were not properly managing the moment. Every parable, every single parable that Jesus taught dealt primarily with two things, management and mismanagement. From creation to our everlasting heavenly call, all has to do with management. Truth, truth be told, truth be told, when God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness uh, in Genesis 1.26, uh, he says, let them have dominion, let them have authority, let them have oversight, let them manage it. Yee, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Let, let, let them manage it. And then he even told them in verse number 28, and God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. Look at somebody and tell them, are you really ready to manage the money that you believe in God to send your way? Are, are you really ready to manage, you know, some folks say, Lord, I want a husband. Lord, I want a wife. God, I want to do this and I want to do that. And truth be told, sometimes if we can't manage what we have, how do we expect God to give us more? You know, you can dance and shout a hole in the carpet, but until you get some wisdom on how to properly manage things. A lot of the stuff that we're dealing with, I'm going to help you in a minute, it's really not the devil. It's our inability to properly manage what God has given to us. Ain't nobody saying amen now. See, see they want God to do everything. And, and they want to continue to close the next year and go into 2020, believe in God for clarity and believe in God to do it when we first have not properly managed it. 
He said, let them have dominion. Let them have authority. Let them have oversight. Let them manage it. And then he put them in the garden of Eden. Somebody say Eden, Eden, Eden. Put them in the garden of, of Eden. Uh, I was talking to somebody the other day. They said that they were on their way to the east. And I said, beautiful. And they said, I can't wait to walk where Jesus walked. I said, oh, that's going to be nice. They said, I can't wait to get down to the Jordan River. I said, that's going to be real nice there. They said, I can't wait to go out to the Mount of Olives. I said, that's going to be good. I said, now, do me a favor. When you get over there, ask them to take you to Eden. They said, well, that, that's not on the itinerary. I said, it's not? They said, no, no. They said, Eden is not on there. I said, well, then ask them why Eden is not on there. And they said, I, I wonder why Eden is not on there. And I'm waiting for them to get back to tell me the answer why right? Eden is not on there. Because truth be told, Eden is not a place. It's an atmosphere. It's an environment. I ain't getting no help. It's an environment. And, and whenever God gets ready to bless his people, he creates the right environment. Y'all talking to me. Creates the right environment. Before he created the fish, he made the sea. I ain't getting no help. Before he put the stars, he created the firmament. Why y'all looking at me like that? And before he created man, he created a place called Eden, which in the Hebrew terminology means presence. So he says, I'm going to put you in my presence. But while you're in my presence, remember, don't mismanage it. Ooh, this is good cooking here. Don't, don't mismanage. You, you can tell it was the presence of the Lord because you never hear about Adam praying. You never hear about Adam fasting. You never hear about Adam interceding. No, he was constantly in the presence of the Lord. And, and guess what? Just like fish can't survive without the water, come on now, and the stars can't survive without the firmament, man cannot survive outside of the brook. Would you look at somebody and tell them, I was created for this. That's why I don't understand why folks stay home and don't come to church. The enemy has bambooed you and hoodwinked you and got you thinking that you can survive outside of his presence. Look at somebody and tell them, just like the fish need water, I need his presence. I, I, I need his presence. I need his, somebody say presence. Presence, presence. I need his presence. Because if I don't have his presence, I can't make it. I said I need his presence. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. I need his presence. And, 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 and so, watch this here. Truth be told, look at Gal uh, uh, Genesis 2, 4 and 5. Look at Genesis 2. 4 and 5. When you look at Genesis 2, 4 and 5, you'll understand something. And that what you'll understand is that God will never manifest until there's somebody ready to manage it. He'll never manifest until there's somebody ready to manage it. The Bible says, These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created in the days that the Lord had made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God, watch this here, had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Why did not God cause it to rain upon the earth? Because there was not a man there to till the ground. Why would God manifest miracles and blessings when we are not ready to manage it? And so at some point we have to take responsibility and say, truth be told, am I really ready for what I'm asking God for? Am I really ready for what I'm asking God for? For you do realize that when God created man, he put him in Eden. Eden was the place of resources. And then, but not only was Eden the place of resources, Eden was also the place of great responsibilities. I am trying to get you ready for the blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings that God is getting ready to send your way. You will never ever advance in the area that you will not expand your divine and intellectual intelligence in you've got to get ready so he says guess what here's all the resources of Eden but with those resources come a responsibility and here's the responsibility in Genesis 2 and 15 and the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to what dress it and to keep it to manage it 
Manage it. Put them there to manage it. And, and you do realize, maybe I should slow down and come in for a landing here. You do realize that with your resources comes a responsibility. And a part of your responsibilities is to acknowledge the restrictions. Look at verse number 16 of Genesis 2. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eateth thou shalt surely die. Lord look at somebody and tell them I, 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 I want the resources. Come on. I, I want the resources. I, I want the resources, but are you ready for the responsibility that comes with the... Re I ain't getting no help. Look at somebody and tell them, are you ready for the responsibility that comes with the resources? You got to be ready for the responsibility because if you're not ready for the responsibility that come with the resources, see, 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 pro proper management, watch this here, proper management is the confirmation that you're ready for more. Proper management is the confirmation that you are ready for more. To receive more without the maturity of proper management can be to one's detriment. This is not fun. We don't like this. Why? Because we want to dance and believe that everything is getting ready to happen for us. Truth. But if you don't follow divine instructions and do what you're supposed to do, how then are we going to take care of it? We'll lose. All right. Watch this here. Go to Genesis chapter number 15. Go to Genesis chapter number 15. Y'all give me some information. Give me, give me Genesis chapter number 15. Give it to me. Genesis chapter number 15. I want you to see this here. Genesis chapter number 15. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Luke chapter number 15. Give me that information. Luke chapter number 15. Luke 15. Luke 15. Real quick. Watch this here. And a man had two sons. The younger of them, the, the immature one, the one that's not mature, said to his father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. Wait a minute. He's young. He's immature. He doesn't know how to properly manage. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together. And took his journey into a far country. There wasted his substance with riotous living. I ain't getting no help right. Did you see that right there? There wait. This is not even in my notes. I need to see. watch this here. There wasted his substance with riotous living. Watch what happened here. Drop down to verse number fourteen. Are you there? Drop down to verse number fourteen. Wasted his substance with riotous living, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. Wait a minute. He was immature to manage, watch this here, the increase that he desired. And so therefore, because he was immature, watch this here. Did you see what happened there? Did you see what happened there? Watch this here. It turned out to his detriment. I'm going to get you there in a minute. Turned out to his detriment. But even in the midst of understanding that, he didn't blame it on nobody. He didn't blame nobody for nothing. He didn't sit back and go, oh, had they not done this and had they not done that and had that one not, no. The Bible says he came to himself. See, and, and, and that, that's where the victory is. It's when you can manage your emotions and stop blaming everybody for stuff that happened to you and come to yourself and realize I need to get up from where I am and get back to where I need to be. Look at somebody and tell them, shame on me if I knock you out your seat, but shame on you if I come back five years now and you still laying there. You got to make up in your mind. It is time for me to get up and return back to my family father's house. Why? Because I mismanaged what I had. Somebody look at your hand and say a whole lot of money has passed through these hands. But tell them it'll never come back until you get the right mindset. First marriage went bad. You still blaming your ex-husband. It's been 25 years. 
He done remarried, got kids. They all in college and doing well. And you sitting on the bar stool smoking Salem Lights 100 and drinking bad liquor. Talking about that's all right. God's going to get him for what he did to me. No, God ain't going to get him. God's going to come and visit you and say, when you going to get the right mindset? Dancing and shouting, shouting and screaming, screaming and running, sliding in the first, second, third home base. But look at somebody telling But when you get up, what's your mindset like? What, what, what's the mindset like? We want to be reinstated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't reinstate you with the same mindset. Notice what the boy said. He said, I'm going to go back to my father's house. And when I get back to my father's house, I'm not going to try to come in like I left. I'm going to come in as a servant. I'm not worthy to be his son. And that's what God is simply saying here. If you want me to restore you and redeem you, then take responsibility for some of the stuff you did that you should not have done and God said now that's the one I'll take and throw the party for. That's the one I put the coat on his back and the shoes on his feet and the ring on his finger. That one there that would say you know what I messed up that first one but I won't do the next one like this here. I messed up when I did this but I won't do that no more and that's the problem I got with church folks. They want to blame everything on the devil but I talked to the devil the other day. He said I'm going to hell because they keep blaming stuff on me that I did not do and I need them to get back to that place and just confess and say I mismanaged it I mismanaged it I mismanaged it your kid 40 years old you wasn't there for nothing and you want to blame it on his mama no I mismanaged it I mismanaged it we, we, we don't want that. See, because proper management will bring more while mismanagement will lead to poverty. <sighs> you, you, you know, let, 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 me, let me cut through here. The, the, the Bible talks about that there was a man he had three servants. I think that's over in St. Luke. The Bible says in Luke chapter number, I think this, is that chapter number 16? No, our text is in Luke 16. The Bible says, let me see, can I find it here? The Bible says, no, it's in Matthew. Matthew, over in Matthew 25. Yeah, Matthew 25. He said he gave one, one talent. Then he gave another one two talents, and he gave another five talents. Now, I wish you would go home and study that. Watch this here. Because uh, he gave every man talents according to his ability. He, he gave every man a talent according to his ability. I was studying this and I got happy. I, I got happy later on. I got happy because when I started studying this right here, watch this here. One talent was equivalent to 20 years of wages. One, one, one talent. So when he says, here's one talent, I said, Lord, did you just show me this? That one talent was equivalent to 20 years of wages. I jumped up in my office and started dancing behind my desk. Because God said, that's just what I'm getting ready to give you at one time. If you can go back the last 20 years and add up all your wages, he said, I'm so God, I give you 20 years worth of wages at one time. Time. You don't know when to praise God. He says, I give you 20, I, I'll let you go back and say, my God, not just what you got five years, 10 years, I go back 20 years and say, listen, this is all the money that you made in 20 years and I'll drop it on you right now. When will he do it? When you're ready to manage it. Don't expect it if you, oh my God. See, some of us, we need to pick up financial magazines. Uh huh. We need to get in touch with somebody and get some financial literacy. My God, why? Because the money is on the way. And if you don't have the mindset, you're going to mismanage the money and going to have to pay a higher cost. He said, I gave this man his talents and guess what he did? He mismanaged it, went and dug in the earth and buried it. And when I came back, I 
took from him what I gave to him and gave it to somebody that knew how to manage it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. But guess what? You got to be ready to manage it. Y'all looking at me sideways. I need you to prophesy to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's getting ready to bless you on top of blessings, on top of blessings, on top of blessings, on top of blessing, but lay your hand on your head and say, God, give me a management mindset so that I don't misappropriate it and misuse it. See, see, see. It's management. 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 How do I manage what I have? Jesus spent a lot of time by himself. Spent a lot of time by himself. Which means that he had self-mastery. He knew how to manage himself. I had to ask God to forgive me the other day. Something made me so upset, mother. I said things I ought not have said. God upset. Ain't no need you looking at me like that. Some of y'all do it too. And, and, and I said, God, help me. I got to manage my emotions better. I, I can't blame nobody for this. I got to manage my, because it's not about what's done to you. It's about how you respond to it. So I said, I got to manage this thing, this thing better. God help me. Jesus spent a lot of time by himself, but then also he had three disciples, Peter, James, and John. He spent time with Peter, James, and and, and John, he, he was able to manage them. But then he also had 12 disciples. And, and he spent time with Thaddeus and Bartholomew and Matthew. He, he spent time with all of, those, all of those folk there. But then also he had the multitude. And then beyond the multitude, he had the crowd. So, so, so wait a minute now. G G Jesus, you, you got the crowd. You got the multitude. You got the 12. You got your three, and you got yourself. I, I, I don't understand, Jesus. How, how, how in the world are you taking care of all of this stuff? Jesus said, you, you, you don't understand uh, uh, that, that when it comes to management, it's, it's not about trying to take care of everybody. It's, it's not about trying to be everything to every. See, some of y'all missing it. See, let, let, let me tell you something. Come just a little closer here. One thing I learned about this church here, and, and, and I learned about leadership and pastoring, only 20% of the people doing 80% of the work. And sometimes if you're trying to preach to the 80% and miss the 20%, you're going to miss the mark. That's where you start mismanaging. I ain't getting no help right here. See, I'm just, I sleep good every night and I keep every meal down that my wife prepares for me to eat. You know why? Because I'm not worried about the 80% I pray for you, but it's that 20%. Y'all looking at me sideways. See, sometimes you're mismanaging your time because you're trying to be everything to everybody and ain't nothing to nobody until you first get yourself together. Why y'all looking at me? Would you look at somebody and tell them a better me makes a better you. A better you makes a better us. Stop trying to be everything to all people. That's the thing with social media have messed some of us up so cotton picking bad that we care more about what people think that we don't even know than the people right around. Y'all looking at me sideways here. I was in the office the other day about 8 o'clock at night here working on some stuff. My daughter called me and said, Daddy, the show getting ready to come on. I said, I know, baby, but I'm trying to get this done because I got to get this out. And the Lord said, Jason, get your blessed assurance up. Get to the house and spend time with that 16 year old daughter though you miss the moment and the opportunity trying to teach the people that don't have a consistency in their mindset to come out to back. Why y'all looking at me like that here? Wasting your time trying to deal with Nigerians that don't even want to show up on time. Would you look at somebody and tell them stop trying to be everything to everybody. You're mismanaging your money. Moments. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. I got in the bed at 3.30 on Thursday night. 3.30, got in the bed. Had to take care of something, got in the bed at 3.30. Got in the bed. Alarm clock went off at 
uh, no, no, I'm sorry, I got to bed at 2.30. Alarm clock went off at 4 o'clock for me to make it to 5 o'clock prayer. I drank me a cold, uh, a lukewarm glass of water and put my hand parts right back in the bed. Why y'all looking at me, son? You know why you don't know it? Because you didn't come to prayer neither. Watch this here. But those that did come, I heard that they prayed my strength in the Lord and they prayed God let our leader get some rest. They prayed God cover he and his family. Look at somebody and tell them you ain't getting ready to kill my pastor by causing him to run around and try to mismanage folk that don't want to be managed. Lean over and tell somebody take care of yourself self no, I didn't miss prayer I stayed in the bed I, I, I stayed in the bed is the mic on y yes I did I, I stayed right in the bed and I didn't get up until about 7 30 8 o'clock then I went to Chick-fil-a got me a sandwich put strawberry jelly on it. Put me about three creams in my decaffeinated coffee and I wasn't thinking about none of y'all. Why? Because God said if you keep mismanaging your time, I'm going to take time from you and you'll look up and never be able to put 70 candles on a cake. But that devil is a liar. Look at somebody and tell them the miracle is in the management. That's what the miracle is. You know, let me tell you something, mother. Some of these folk don't care enough to come to church, but let word get out that God has transitioned me from labor to reward. They have to have five, my God, services just to get them in here. But that devil is a liar. You ain't getting ready to kill me. I'll pack up and leave before I let this happen. The devil is a liar. I'm going to enjoy my wife and my family and learn how to manage my time. <laughs> Counsel people that they don't even stay for Bible study. So I call for counseling another week. I say I counsel on Wednesday for Bible study. I, I can't make it Wednesday. Can't do it Tuesday. Nope, my program on TV. You, you can't. You can't do it too. No, I say if your problem bad enough, you'll make it on a Wednesday. I can make it Friday. That's my movie day. Your problem can't be that bad enough. If your problem get bad enough, you'll make it on a Wednesday. They come walking straight through the door. I said, how you doing? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm holding on. I said, you plan to stay for Bible study? I won't be able to stay for Bible study. I said, ain't that a shame? You won't be able to stay for Bible study? No. Why, why you can't stay for Bible study? I just got some stuff I got to get done and this, that, and other. I said, oh, okay, well, hold tight. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Came right on back in there with some old DVDs. Put that in your DVD player. Watch that right there. This is your answer for your problem right there. This, this DVDs, yeah. See, the answer you need, God sent it before you had the problem, but you couldn't manage your time to get the church on. So, so here it is right here. And my wife actually said, don't you feel bad? I said, nope. See, because sometimes, watch this here, we're majoring in minor stuff. <sighs> Didn't do no counsel that day. You got to learn how to, oh, y'all stand, my time up, y'all stand, come on. Stand. Speak softly. And run right up on me. I'll finish it Wednesday. God bless you. Slip your hands up, Father. We thank you and we bless you because you've been so good to us. You've been so kind to us. God, we thank you right now because you are the great and mighty God. And beside you, there is no other. Awesome Savior, you are a wonderful, wonderful counselor. You are. God, I thank you right now that you are putting a spirit of management in the hearts and minds of your people. God, thank you, Father, because you're going to cause your people to understand that we have to manage what we have in order for you to give us more. 
For this we say thank you. God, give your people a mindset, Father, to manage their time with their families, to manage their time with ministry, that they don't spend so much time out of Eden, out of your presence, out of your environment, out of your atmosphere, but they must manage their time and get back into the house of God. God calls them to manage their resources in the name of Jesus. Calls them to manage their resources. That they lean not to their own understanding, but in all their ways acknowledge you, Father. Calls them to honor you, Father, with the first fruits of their harvest, the first fruits of their increase, Father. That you might bless them with more. For this we say thank you. We shall live and not die. We shall enjoy the fruits of our labor. In the name of Jesus. Reach over and grab that neighbor by the hand. Tell them this miracle is up to you. Jesus. Hear me, hear me. Took himself with the three, with the twelve, with the multitude that followed him. And they went into the wilderness, the Bible says, after he found out that John the Baptist had been beheaded. They went into the wilderness, and the Bible said the great multitude followed him. And then Jesus sat down and began to teach them. And as he began to teach them, he realized that the hour was far spent. And he turned to Philip and said, Philip, how shall we feed them? He's getting ready to manage. And the Bible says that, Philip says, I just took an assessment and what we have is not enough. What we have is not sufficient. What we have is not enough. He took an assessment. He says, but wait a minute. Let me manage this situation because the Bible says he already knew what he was going to do. Look at that person and tell them, you got to manage every circumstance. You got to manage every situation. You have to manage it. He already knew what he was going to do. So the Bible says that there's a little boy here who has a lunchbox. So after he took an assessment, they found out what was allotted. And he took those two fish and five barley loaves. If you're going to properly manage, you got to assess and you got to know what's allotted. You got to know what's available to you. You got to know what you have access to. And the Bible says he took those two fish and five barley loaves and he lifted them up. Oh my God. Look at somebody and tell them your appreciation is a part of your management. He lifted them up. He began to say, God, I appreciate you. Even though what I have is not enough to meet my need, I'm going to bless you for what's not enough because I believe you to make it more than enough. Let me tell you something right now. You might be dealing with a deficit, but you better learn how to manage what's minuscule. The Bible says he lifted it up and he began to thank him for it. And guess what a part of great management is, Jasmine? After he, watch this here, showed appreciation, he called his disciples and he gave them authority. He began to distribute to them. Are you catching this? You're not managing if you got to do everything by yourself. You're going to burn yourself out, Moses. You're not managing if you got to show up, close up, vacuum up, clean up, close out. No, you're not managing. You're more busier than a one-armed wallpaper hanger. I'm telling you right now, you're going to burn yourself out. Learn to allocate. Look at somebody and tell them I'm here to help you manage. And the Bible says that when he began to allocate to them, he said, make them sit down in companies of fifties and hundreds. Wait a minute. That spoke of administration. You can't help me manage if you got a poor administration. Make them sit down in companies of fifties and hundreds. How can I help you manage and get to that, that school you want to go to and, and get to that grade you want to go to if I don't take proper administration on what you got to get done by next week? Proper administration. 
squeeze that hand gently. Tell them God's getting ready to cre- increase your ability at administrating. And the Bible says that after everybody had eaten and was full, he said, pick up the fragment pieces, which means that, guess what? After administration came abundance. After management came abundance. And I speak the abundance of God upon you right now in the name of Jesus peace of God be upon you right now receive it peace of God be upon you right now receive it the peace of God be upon you right now receive it in Jesus name the miracle was in the management throw your arms around three people and tell them get ready for the miracle that comes with management in the name of Jesus 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Put this up here. Who gave me this? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Slip those hands up. We're going home. We're going home. We're going home. We're going home. Slip those hands up. Zion is calling me to a higher place. I pray to stand upon the mountain mountain and to magnify his name. name. Come on and tell all the people people and every nation that he reigns. Come on, there it is, everybody. Zion calling me to a higher. Come on, everybody, Zion, Zion, Zion. Everybody's calling me to a higher place. To stand upon the mountain. Come on, and to magnify his name. Come on, and tell all the people. Every nation that he reigns. That's it, Zion, 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 calling me to a higher All right, listen, I'm, I'm done, I'm done. Listen, let me say this to you. The greatest management that one could do is to move into the body of Christ. I'm telling you right now, you can't make it out there on your own. There's safety in the ark. Just look at somebody and tell them, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. If you have never confessed Christ as your Savior, this is now the opportunity. Come. This is now the opportunity. Come. Come. Don't sin. Come. This is now the opportunity. Thank you. This is now the opportunity. If you have never confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, tomorrow is not promised. The rest of the day is not promised. We need a personal relationship with him. Do you not understand that the enemy crept into the garden, deceived them into mismanagement, which moved them out? But thank God for Jesus who came back and says, you know what? I'll take a proper calculation here. I'll die for all so that none should perish. Do you not understand before you ever committed a sin, you had a savior? Oh my God. And all you got to do is accept him in your heart. You know, I've heard it put as just as simple as ABC. Admit that I'm a sinner. Believe that he died upon you, a cross for your sins, and confess him as Lord and Savior. Who's today? Who's today? Who, who's going to make the devil out of a lie today? And say, you know what? I want to accept the Lord into my heart as my personal Savior in Jesus' name. Come on, just look at somebody and tell them Jesus is waiting. The Lord is waiting. Jesus is waiting. Jesus is waiting. Here's my second appeal and I must move on. 
You know without a doubt that you struggle in that area of management. You know without a doubt. You're believing God for great things, but you struggle in that area of management. You get paid on Friday, and by Friday night, you can't tell where your money went. You wake up in the morning, you say, you know what, I need to lose weight. But guess what? By the middle of the day, you eating Krispy Kreme donuts and you're struggling with that level of discipline. You can't manage that stuff. And you keep blaming it on the devil. No, that, that, that ain't the devil. You, you, you need some help with your management. You're always showing up late. You, you mismanage your time. You go to bed too late, my God, and you sleep too late. And some of us, you go to bed too early and sleep too late. And, and you need help. Let me tell you something right now. You ain't got to deal with that by yourself. I want to pray with you. If you're here today, I want to pray with you because I don't want the blessings of the Lord to begin to fall upon you and then you can't give proper account for them. In the name, if you are here and you know you need help with that, any area of your life with management, any area of your life, I want you to come and receive prayer right here. I want you to come and receive prayer. We're going home in a few minutes. God, I need you to help me. I can't manage my time when it's time to pray. I can't manage my time when it's time to spend time with my children. In the name of Jesus. God, I need you to help me. Help, help, help me, Lord. Help me. I drink too much sweet tea. God, help me. I need to manage this stuff. If not, it's going to catch you down the road. You got to get it together now. I stay on social media too much. Help me. I'm, 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 I'm talking for somebody here. Help me. I talk too much. Help me. I can't go to bed without watching Instagram. I fall asleep without. Help me. You got to be able to manage this stuff. I complain too much. I argue too much. God, help me. Be angry and sin not. But my God, you make anger a part of your morning, a part of your afternoon, a part of your evening. I'm telling you, God, help me. Now, what I want you to do right here at this altar, there's some more that need to be at this altar because I'm telling you right now, God, I don't care how good you got it. You need help somewhere. I preach too long. Help me. I don't preach long enough. Help me. I worry too much. I got to manage this stuff. Right here at this altar. Spirit of the living God, every head bowed, every eye closed. God, you sent this word. Allow this word to rest in the hearts of your people. God, bring about change and transformation in their minds. Do it for your glory right now. In the name of Jesus. God, we come just like the prodigal son and we repent. Forgive us. Forgive us. Come on, come on, come on. God, forgive us. Forgive us, oh God, for living imbalanced lives, Father. Forgive us for not managing properly. For getting in over our heads, oh God, and blaming everybody else, God. Forgive us. Help us now, God. We need you right now, God. Restore unto us the missed moments and opportunities, Father, the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar has devout, God. Forgive us. For this we say thank you and we bless you for it in Jesus' name. Here, don't go nowhere. Hear me as a prophet of the Lord. This will be the week of recalibration. This will be the week of a fresh start and God will reset. This will be the week that God will challenge you to take an assessment. This will be the week that you got to find out what's been allocated. This will be the week where you will make time to show appreciation. This will be the week that you will begin to give authority and administration. This will be the week that you will experience God's overflow and abundance. And I just need you to lift your voices right here and begin to tell him thank you right now. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to tell him thank you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, transform our minds, oh God, transform our hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus. For this we say thank you.